Hi there, today I'm gonna to read CC Love Science. Um, hmm, there's a sticker covering it up. By Dirting Johannes and illustrated by Vashti Harrison. And I really like her illustrations. I have a lot of books with her illustrations that I'll share with you. CC Love Science. Cece loved to ask questions. Her mother said her first word was why. Her father said it was how. But her favorite question was what if. She has her lab up in a tree. That's pretty cool. You would make a great scientist, Cece, said her teacher, Miss Curie, because science is all about asking questions. Do fish ever get thirsty? Cece wanted to know. They do, said Mrs. Curie. Do hummingbirds really hum? Mm, the sound comes from their wings, said Miss Curry. What if we all jumped at the same time with the earth move? Good question, said Miss Curry. I think we should investigate. Cece has lots of questions. You go to a science school and you ask lots of good questions too. Miss Curry told Cece and her friends about famous scientists from history, such as Caroline Herschel, Thomas Edison, George Washington Carver. Oh, we learned about George Washington Carver in our growing unit, and Jane Goodall. She also introduced them to many different scientists. Geology is the study of Earth. Biology is the study of living things. And etnomology is the study of insects. Etn etomology. Et entomology. Hmm. I actually didn't know that word. One day, Miss Curry told everyone to pair up. For our next project, I'd like you to pick a science you are curious about and come up with a question to investigate, she said. Cece and her best friend Isaac were a team. They both loved zoology, which is the study of animals. I know our friend Amir in our class wants to be a zoologist when he grows up. Now they just need to think of an interesting question. First, they brainstormed a bunch of ideas. Science is all about possibilities. Is a bear ticklish? Cece asked. Do we really want to find out? <laughs> Said Isaac. Do pigs know when they're smelly? Cece asked. Only a pig can answer that, Isaac said. Keep thinking, said Miss Curry. A scientist thinks outside the box and never, ever gives up. I'm trying to think of a science question I could figure out. One night at dinner, Cece was explaining the project to her parents when her dog Einstein jumped up and started eating the food right off her plate. Einstein, down, said Cece's mother. Cece giggled. Her plate was licked clean, except for the broccoli. Look what Einstein did, she said. I guess neither of you likes your veggies, her dad started laughing. This observation gave Cece a great idea. Einstein could be their science project. Cece called Isaac. I've got this. Let's find out if dogs eat vegetables. Cool, said Isaac. Cece couldn't wait to get started. The next day after school, Cece and Isaac headed straight to Cece's lab to work on their project. Miss Curry's science project worksheet, Cece and Isaac. Zoology, the study of animals. This is their graphic organizer. You're, you've been working on graphic organizers in our class too. Brainstorm idea. Is a bear ticklish? Do pigs think they sting? Do fish sleep? So that's like their ideas. They're thinking up ideas. And then they come up with the question, do dogs eat vegetables? Your test subject is dogs, which is related to the wolf and the coyote. And list some fun facts about your subject. Einstein, named after Albert Einstein, weighs 40 pounds, color gray, eyes brown. So they're going to study with her dog to figure it out. What do we do first? Asked Isaac. Let's observe our subject. Observe means to pay attention and maybe watch. Observation. Doggy treats guarantee 100% participation, said Cece. Excellent data, said Isaac. Isaac and Cece watched Einstein eat. They watched Einstein drink. They even watched Einstein sleep. Sometimes science was all about waiting and waiting and waiting for something really cool to happen. I know... For second graders when we were in kindergarten we waited and we, we waited and we waited watching the eggs to hatch from our observations we know einstein loves to eat kibble and doggy treats said cc now we need to investigate our questions said isaac do dogs eat vegetables i 
already know Einstein doesn't like broccoli, said Cece. I don't either. Let's test some different veggies, said Isaac. It's experiment time, said Cece finally. So they wrote their observations of the things that their dog does. And then here's their experiment. They're going to try carrots, beans, and cucumbers on their dog to see if Einstein will eat them. Cece and Isaac tried carrots, beans, cucumbers. Einstein turned up his nose to each one. What if we disguise the vegetables with bacon and ketchup? Isaac asked. This time Einstein was interested. He ate the bacon and licked the ketchup off the vegetables. This means he likes bacon and ketchup, said Cece. What if we just mix up the vegetables with his kibble? Asked, I with, asked Isaac. I bet he won't even know the difference, said Cece. Einstein ate all his kibble but left the vegetables in the bottom of the bowl. Einstein might not eat vegetables, but he sure is smart, said Cece. I've done this with my dog before, who's over here whining. Hi, Ladybird. Sometimes Ladybird will eat around everything and just leave a little bit she doesn't like. Come here, Ladybird. It's okay. I think Ladybird saw a dog outside. Cece gave Einstein a treat and rubbed his ears. Good boy, she said. She looked at I She looked at Isaac and shrugged. What now? We're supposed to interpret our data, said Isaac. Einstein definitely loves to eat, said Cece. He sure doesn't like broccoli, said Isaac. He doesn't like any vegetables, said Cece. Not even if we cover them in bacon and ketchup, said Isaac. I guess Einstein is a picky eater, said Cece. So that's what they've decided is Einstein is picky and does not like to eat his vegetables. That night at dinner, Cece was so disappointed she didn't even finish her dessert. Maybe I'm not a real scientist after all, she said. Our project was kind of boring. I thought you asked a great question, her dad said. Einstein put his paws on the table and sniffed Cece's banana split. Einstein, Cece giggled. Naughty puppy. Her mother laughed and pulled Einstein away. He may not eat vegetables, she said, but he sure likes bananas. Hmm, that's when Cece remembered something. Miss Curry said scientists always think outside the box. What if we create a secret recipe using bananas? Oh. Maybe trying to hide the veggies and bananas? Cece and Isaac rushed home after school and mixed together carrots, beans, cucumbers, and bananas in a blender. Are those still veggies? Asked Isaac. Yep, said Cece. They're just in a different form. Gross, Isaac said, wrinkling his nose. Hmm. Doesn't seem gross to me. Cece poured the mixture into Einstein's bowl. How about a special smoothie, she asked, patting his head. At first, Einstein looked confused. He circled the bowl, he sniffed the bowl, then he got down on his belly and wagged his tail. Then he slurped down the entire thing. Look, he loves it, said Isaac. In science, not all results, results are totally predictable. Einstein does eat vegetables when we mix them with bananas, said Cece. And that's when Cece made the most extraordinary observation of all. Science isn't just about asking questions. Real scientists have fun finding answers, too. And there's the whole worksheet. So they interpreted the data. So it's not that he doesn't like veggies. He just doesn't eat them unless you mix them with bananas, is what they discovered. And that's it. And then in the back, there's some science facts and some... Um, of the keywords that we talked about that are inside of the book. And there's all the kids with their teacher, Miss Curry. The end.